um, we're at the bottom of Yud Beis on base 12, 12b. We're in the middle of discussing the concept where, where two people are, are dividing property. And there's a reason why one of them should get a double portion. So, um, so for example, we said that if the, the Bechor takes a double portion, then the Bechor is entitled to, uh, to get his property all on one border. So he takes one large property. <clears throat> Uh, we had a debate with regard to a Yavam. That means that a person who marries a deceased brother's wife gets not only his own inheritance, but also the inheritance of his deceased brother. Abai and Rava debated whether that's one big inheritance or it's whether considered or whether it's considered two separate inheritances, and therefore you're not entitled to get it all on one border. Okay. But who does Zavin Ara Ametzur de Benasha? Uh, about 12 lines in the bottom of the page. Somebody bought property next next to his wife's family. So when his wife was getting her inheritance, he asked that she should get it next to his property. <clears throat> so Amrabba Rabba says, he can say, I on me this time. But, you know, why not? Why not help him out? Why shouldn't you try to accommodate his request? Maskler of Yosef, so the, the idea here, the idea here of invoking Midas Italian basically means that there's no difference to the brothers whether or not he, he gets the property that's next to his field, or should we say his wife gets the property next to her husband's field, or whether she gets a different property. But Revesa points out that if there's even a tiny difference, any reason in the world why the brothers would prefer, why anybody would prefer that property, mm -hmm. Then that is sufficient enough. That's sufficient or sufficient to reason not to give it to him. Midas Adam basically is like it doesn't make a difference. Why do you care? Just give it to me. But if it's any reason why I would care, then then that that argument falls by the wayside. So Rav Yosef says maybe they could, the brothers can say, "We like that property better. It's like the the property of Bay Barmerian. Barmerian is very powerful family, very wealthy as well, and they love their they love their money." So maybe they the family finds that property as desirable as Barmerian found their own property. And the follows the opinion of Yosef. Even if there's some minor reason, insignificant reason why anyone would prefer that field, you cannot invoke the principle of Midas Dain. The Midas Dain would be the the uh, um the behavior of that of Stein, the the place that God destroyed. A guy has his two properties, both on the edges of a canal. So basically, both properties are equal. They're both next to a canal. And the guy wants the property that's adjacent to his his, his other property. So Rabbi, Rabbi says, but why not give it to him? Rabbi says, no, no, no. They're not the same. It could be that the canals, which carry the water from the river to the fields, are not equal. Meaning, some canals are are uh, they last longer? They dry up. They, they they don't dry up as fast. So maybe the guy would prefer the field that's next to his because he thinks that 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 canal will last longer. So therefore, you cannot invoke the principle that what difference does it make? Because it, it could make a minor difference. and Allah follows of Yosef. Tarati, two properties, Achad Nagra on the same canal. Amr Yosef, Sir Yosef says, So now that the properties are identical, they're on the same exact canal. Sir Yosef says, Yeah, now I now I think that that you can invoke the principle of this time. You give the guy the property that is closest to his existing property. Because why not? It doesn't make any difference to the other guy. Maskla Bayo, Abaya says, Motzi Amar Beina the the Ofish Arise. Okay, see. It's a very interesting argument. This is this has a lot to do with um this this principle is often used today when the government invokes eminent domain. So it's a very interesting so sometimes what happens is the government buys property, they build something. So for example, it's an interesting case that's been going on for a very long time. Uh, somebody owns property right next to uh, right next to the National Nuclear Test Range, NNTR. That's commonly known as Area 51. 
and they own property in it, surrounded by government property. Every time they call up the government, to, they want to go visit their property. The government doesn't stop all the secretive activity they, they do. So the government just tried to buy them out. Bless they you. argue that so the government says your property is worth equivalent property to some no place property anywhere in Nevada. Mm -hmm. They say, no, no, no. Our property is next to Area 51. We could have an Area 51 hotel and we can have all the <laughs> conspiracy <laughs> theories that will come to our property. So it's worth a tremendous amount of money. The government's argument is the only reason why it's worth money is because we built Area 51. You can't argue that your property is worth money when it's dependent on our value. So this is a little bit what's going on here. So you think of the guy has one property here, right? Mm -hmm. and there's two properties on top. The guy wants the, the, so the first guy, he wants the property next to it. The second guy says, no, no, no. I want the property in between. Why? Because if I have the property in between, the, the other guy will have to hire two separate people. Mm. It's good for security. I'll benefit from the fact that he has to hire two security guards, two, two sharecroppers, which is, it's good for security. Mm -hmm. Whereas if he, if he gets connect, if he connects both fields, the security value that I get is less. And again, the first guy argues, what do you mean? That, that's me. <clears throat> you can't argue that it's me this time because of what I'm going to have to go through to be able to, to take, take care of the fields. It's not, it's not a fear comparison. And the Gemara says that Rav Yasef's argument is correct. Rav Yasef is right, meaning that you can't, the, the second guy can't argue because the first guy will have to hire extra people that that's not called me this time. It is called me this time. He's not entitled to nosh off the first guy's security you know, because, because he's inconveniencing the first guy by putting his field in between on the other side of his own fields. Okay. Afushila Milsi, it's not an argument. Okay, it's an interesting one. So you have the pictures here. Khadgi Sanagra and Khadgi Sanara. There's two properties being split by two brothers. One property has on it a canal, the other property has in it a river. Now there's advantages to each one. So how exactly do you split the property? Sigmar says Pagan Law Bikaran is you split it by corners, meaning you divide it into a pizza, like you see in the picture there, and uh, everyone gets one. Everyone gets four slices of the pizza. So this way, everybody has a property that's adjacent to the river, adjacent to the canal, and uh, two properties that are that are that are neither. Okay, fine. Vile is a trocklin, a palace. Amen. You don't. You can't split up a palace unless it's big enough. That each person can get a portion of the palace, and it's still cool that each one's living in a palace. So, let's say the palace isn't big enough. You know, there's only one kitchen or something. So, Ma, what's the story? So, this is what we spoke about, what I mentioned yesterday the shotgun clause. This is a version of it. Good Agud basically is where one guy could say to the other, either I buy you out or you buy me out. Is is that a possibility? Meaning, you have two brothers. We'll soon see a bunch bunch of similar stories. Two brothers. One guy wants to keep the palace. Can he tell his friend, "Look, instead of us living in the palace every other day, I'll buy out your portion, or you buy out my portion." Can that be forced? So if Yehuda says, "Yeah," and if Nachman says, "No," there's no such thing as good ayagut. According to Nachman, it says there's you can't force the you can't force the either 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 your purchase or his sale, uh, your purchase or your sale. Okay, it's an If you have a a firstborn son and a non firstborn son, their their father left them a non kosher animal, so you know a, ho a horse. And a slave. How do they divide it up? Kate said, Eisen. Okay. What, what's the problem here? The problem is that obviously none of these things have to be have to be alive to be useful. So how do you divide it up? So Amr Lais is very simple. You do it time wise. The 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 Bukhara, the firstborn, he gets two days, and the rate and the regular son gets one day. And they rotate two days, one day, two days, one day. Sigmar asks, You have a person that's half free man, half slave. How is that possible? There were two partners that owned him. And one, one partner freed him. 
So what does he do? He serves him. He gets one day off, and one day he serves his ma- the other master. This is the opinion of You've solved the problem for the master, but you haven't solved his problem. Why? Lisa Shifra Eniachel. He can't marry a maidservant because he's a he's a free man. Lisa Baschar Eniachel, and he can't marry a regular woman because because uh, he he's a free he, he's a, he's a slave. So what does he do? Yivatel. Maybe he shouldn't get married at all. Valle Nivra Elam Ela Priya Verivia. A person has an obligation to to propagate and 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 to to have children. Shinamar, as the verse says, Loyla Tayu Bara Lashavis Yitzara. God didn't create the world to be void. He created Lashavis to, to be filled with people. So how, it's not possible for him to get married. So Ella Kaifin as Rabbi of Aisan Isa bin Kharim, he forced the master to free him. The Kaisin Shtara Khatsidamov and the the now free free man agrees to pay the master half of his value, the half that the other master owns. And eventually, because of Basil, Lahiris Kadibri Bashamai, eventually Basil agreed to, to Bashamai. Okay. One second. Now, the reason here for Basil is because that you want to have you want to give the slave the possibility of getting married and having children. Well, one second. Isn't there another reason here? Good or good. Why can't the slave say? Uh, you know, let me buy. I, I, you know, you can't buy me out because you can't. You can't buy a free man. But let me buy my own portion out from you. Why do you need the argument of because because we need to have kids? That's what we're we're forcing the master to agree. Why isn't the master forced because of the law of good ayagud? As you can imagine, it's a problem. It's not good ayagud here. It's good ikka agud leka. Shiny halka the agud ikka good leka. Agud meaning the slave could buy out his own could buy out his master's portion. But the master can't buy his slave's portion because you can't turn a free man into a slave. The only way to create it, to get a slave is either to, to acquire one, acquire, acquire an existing one or have one born to you, or to conquer one in war. You can't take a free man and conquer him. It doesn't work. <laughs> so you can't buy you can't buy him either. So therefore, it's a one-way relationship. So we, we cannot invoke the principle of good ayogas. Because the idea of good ayogas is only when they're both capable of, of, of engaging in this in this type of split. One guy is able to afford it. The other guy is, is able to afford it. And they say, okay, well, one of us has to buy the whole thing. Is it going to be you or me? There is the offer. Do you want to match it? If you match it, you can take my portion. Okay. Toshma. Shneach and Echad Ani Vechad Asher. You have two brothers, one with poor, one with wealthy. So you can already see the problem here. Beniach and Aviyah Merchatz, Abay Sabah. The father left him a bathhouse or, or a olive press. Asan L'Schar, Haschar L'Amtza. So let's say these were commercial enterprises. So then they split the profits. That makes sense. A very easy way to split. Let's say they were personal. The wealthy guy could tell the poor, So in order to operate a private bathhouse or a private uh, uh, olive press, you need to have maid servants or, or servants to operate the bathhouse. And you have to have olives to, to, to be worthwhile to press. So the wealthy guy can tell the poor guy, well, here's your portion, and uh, have a great day. Enjoy something that for you is useless, because you can't do anything with that. Okay, so Gemara says in a second, why can't, we, why can't the wealthy guy force a sale? He could say, good or good. Either buy it out from me, or I'll buy it out from you. So Gemara says, well, that's not going to work, because the guy's poor. So he can't afford it. Okay, meaning, that's in a, that's in a very important point here. The concept of good or can only work when they can both afford it. Mm-hmm. They can't both afford it. There's no good or Good or has to literally be practical, where both guys are equally able to acquire the item. And then one guy could say, look, this, it's it. We're, we're dividing it. It's either you or it's me. Who is it going to be? Okay. Hasanami good or Okay. Toshma. Toshma, let's try to prove, prove, prove the res- resolution to this. Kol she'ilu yichalik shmei alav kolken. Okay, the, the, the mission says that anything that you can divide up and the name is still on it, so then you divide it. Otherwise, otherwise you you uh, evaluate it and you and one guy pays the other guy. Like for example, like a palace, if you if it's too small to split, if you split the palace, you know it's become an apartment an apartment complex. So then you can't split it. Somebody has to get it. And what do you do? You evaluate it. 
and presumably one guy buys out the other guy. Presumably this supports the opinion of Rabbi Huda that says good ayogut, meaning you have no way to divide it. So what do you do? You force a sale. Who's going to buy it? Me or you? And they're both, presumably, they're both capable of, of putting in offers. So Gemara says, Tanoi, it's a machlag, it's Tanob. The Tanya we learned, Torlat the Shir, Vani Pochis. One brother says to the other brother, You take your, your uh, you know, your four amis in the courtyard, and I'll take less than the four amis. Shemelai, we listen to him. You know, they can agree to that. Shemelai, Shemelai says, Ain't Shemelai, we don't listen. So Gemara says, Hey, Kidami, what's the scenario? Elam Kitani. If they both agree, why wouldn't we listen to them? My time at Rav Shem Gamliel. What's the reason of Rav Shem Gamliel? One guy agrees that so the first guy says, well, we're going to split the courtyard. The problem is the courtyard only has uh, you know, 90 square feet. So, so the one guy says, the other guy, you take 36 for your entrance, plus another 36. So you have 72 square feet, and I'll take the last 18. <clears throat> and they both agree. What's the problem? They both agree to it. You know, what does it hurt? Why does Rav Shem Gamliel disagree? El lav it must be chesur mechsur. The, the Bryce is missing words. Vachit kamar. This is what the Bryce means to say. Toil ato shir vani pochis. You take. Uh, you the, the one guy says to the other one. You take your seventy two feet. I'll take the eighteen. Shemulei, we listen to him. The good I all good nami shemulei. Or he can offer good I all good, meaning I'll buy it out for this price, or you buy me out for the same price. And Shemulei says, also Shemulei meimar ain't shemulei. That Rishon Lil disagrees to the concept of good ayagot, like Rav Nachman. So the debate between Rav Nachman and Rav Yehuda is the same debate. Okay, so Gemara says, So Gemara says, no, 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 maybe you can go back to the first explanation, where one guy wants to take 18 square feet and leave his friend the rest. Uh, one second. Um, uh, we are, in other words, Rav Shem disagrees on the idea that that uh, of the good ayagod. He because it could be a scenario where there is no good ayagod because the, there is not there isn't the guy doesn't have enough money, and the guy says, "And let's say you want to give it to me as a gift, I don't want to receive it as a gift." Someone who hates gifts will live. Okay, see you tomorrow. Okay. My apologies for the delay.